Thank you. So when was the wedding? Mm -hmm. 26th December 2011. How many years are those? Nine. Ah, we are in our tenth year. By the way, that is good. <laughs> that is serious, eh? Oh, we, we, th we thank the Lord. We thank the Lord. <laughs> so during these ten years, it, I'm sure it has been blessed. I can see that you are friends. So during these ten years, did you have any challenge that, because you would imagine that having such a big challenge during dating mm -hmm. must mean then that your lives thereafter will just be perfect. So have you had any significant challenge after the wedding? Mm, let me maybe go first and say every every marriage may has its own ups and downs. They could be financial. We were all of us struggling now with our postgraduate studies. But I would say one that caught us was when we lost our baby. That I would say was the biggest challenge, the biggest unknown thing that came into our family. But through it all, we overcame. What happened? Yeah, we, we were expecting our second born. Mm -hmm. We have we already had our first born daughter. So we were expecting our second born. And uh, you know, when you're expecting, uh, the, f the first born is there asking you, Mommy, why is your tummy uh, coming uh, bigger than mine? And you're telling us we have a baby we're expecting. So we were all of us expecting. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the day came, we were now due, and labor came. And off we were to the hospital, and getting to the hospital, we I got admitted, we were there, and we, we were hoping for the best now, since we already had a firstborn. And on admission, uh, as the tests were being done most of, uh, uh, on the baby, mm -hmm. uh, something was uh, not very well. The doctors were saying the, the fetal heart rate was going low, low. And uh, they were doing all that that they could, and uh, I remember I was uh, put on. A, I was induced through the drip. Uh, yeah, the time you could help me know <laughs> what that is, but I call it drip. And uh, lo and behold, baby was here, and uh, but uh, something unique was uh, not uh, the same. When I got the firstborn, I remember her cry, and then she was lifted, and I was given. Yeah, sh yeah, I was given to hold her. But now this one, uh, he was just when 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 he 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 came, he was delivered. The nurse took hold of him, and then he akawa mishtuka. And then the next thing I, I I could hear her calling all over, calling the doctor. And by that time, I remember there was a national strike for the doctor. So the hospital, which was a private hospital, was a bit overwhelmed. So I would hear that that commotion here and there. I, I didn't know what was happening. And I remember for once that time starting to pray, telling God, God, this is not normal. Please, uh, may there be a way. And I don't know why, for some reason, I was also praying that uh, even if that boy is dead, I, uh, I was feeling it's a boy. We had not gone for us. We had gone for a scan, but we were we, we, we requested that we don't know the gender. So I was, I, I was saying, I know you, you've given us a boy, and uh, even if... He's dead. You he resurrected, so that boy will be all right. And I kept praying loudly, actually. And uh, when the nurse came, I was cleaned up, and then off I went to now see the baby. And when I got uh, to where the baby was, I met my husband already there. He was already in. And uh, when I looked at everyone, they were now quiet, looking at me. Uh, but the baby was there, so uh, he he. I went up to where he was standing, and he was standing looking at the baby. The baby was in a baby coat. Ah, let's leave it there. Yeah. What is your version of this same story? Yeah, I think I have nothing to add there. It was exactly that. That's how a baby was born. Um, when she was being cleaned, I was called in. The nurse came in and picked me. And from the way the nurse was presenting herself, I knew things are not very nice. Because she began going around in corners, telling me, you know, you know, there are times when we as nurses, we do all the things we can, but at least we leave them at God's will. And I looked at her, I said, just tell me what has happened. How is the baby? And now she told me, the baby is not alive. I said, okay, can I go in? 
No. When I, she said the baby is not alive, I asked, what about my wife? She told me she's okay, she's being clean. Can I go in? She said, come, follow me. So by the time she was being brought from being cleaned, I was there, I had already seen the baby. And the first thing I did when I looked at that baby, I noticed, yes, he was a boy. And for all this time, we were asking God to give us a boy. And even we didn't have any, we actually had only one name for a boy. That was <coughs> Nimra. And uh, we had that trust that the Lord has given us a baby boy. And it is interesting, even for the viewer. Mm -hmm. God hears our prayers. There are times when these prayers may not be answered the same way we want and at the time, but they will always answer every sincere prayer. And in our hearts, we were at peace that he has given us a baby boy. So I went and I confirmed for sure he was a boy. But you see, when the baby is placed there and you are told he's not alive, you even feel like you want to... So I held him. I'm actually the one who wrapped him up. And then I could raise the hand and the hand comes down. I could do like this. The, boy, the baby is not responding for sure to just confirm indeed he is. And just when that was happening, now my wife came in. And when she came in, I remember what she asked me was, is our baby alive? I even wondered, you mean you are discussing about him either being alive or dead in there? Because that was the only question. And I told her, no, he is not. And I took her to where the baby was standing. And I could also see her also wanting now to hold her. I mean, to hold the baby. Now, we did so. I'm also grateful that the hospital allowed us to do that. There are some facilities you may not be allowed because he's dead. That is the end. Mm -hmm. But the nurses there were good people. They allowed us even hold. Mm -hmm. And they said we can take all the time we need. And for sure, we took some time. We were there for almost an hour. An hour plus, just holding the baby, looking at each other. And anything she was saying was, you see, it's a boy. God had given us a boy. Yeah, and so that's the version of up there. Mm. Mwanaume, how was it telling your wife? Hey, why? Iyo ni kali. Kusema ukweli, kwa mambo kama haya ya kifo, hakuna mwanaume. We are just two feeble people, and you have to look for a way of of supporting each other. Um, To me, I didn't find it any hard to either go around in circles. And that's how I just went direct to tell her. And uh, it's always the best to just share some of these sad news as plain as they are. It helps in accepting that something bad has happened. And then that individual, so I, I will not say there was ata kulikona anything ya kukua manaume hapo. Grief has knocked. It is here. We just handle it that way. And there we were. So I didn't have any other way. It was just to tell her for sure, baby is not there, and come and confirm for yourself. Then um, uh, we left hospital. Did you, did you take baby home for a, a burial? Did you do a funeral? How did you handle that? Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, we, 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 were, we were given options by the hospital. Uh, we had two options, to, to bury the baby ourselves or to allow the hospital bury the baby. And um, after consultation, the two of us, and then we also involved our parents, mm -hmm. uh, his parents and uh, my parents as well. They advised us uh, to let the hospital bury the baby. Mm -hmm. they, they, they really gave us a nice advice, which we appreciate up to date, that uh, not that we had not stayed with the baby for long, just having the baby go bury, get buried in a ceremony it would be even more traumatizing and would not help us so much in the healing. It, it would be better mm -hmm. to let the hospital bury. Healing would come much faster. And uh, we, we heeded to that advice and that's how we, we let the hospital bury the baby. Yeah. So you then went home? Yeah, we went home. We, we had to leave. Actually, I have to mention that, that uh, all along, uh, I got the, uh, we got the baby, it was uh, nine, uh, at night, 9, 9 p.m. So over the, during the night, it was communicating to our parents. Uh, and you know, I, I, the, the way you bring this news, ah, we got a baby boy, and they said, ah, -da 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 -da. then you tell them, no, but now the boy is not there. Oh, it was, yeah. Uh, it had not hit me hard that for sure I got that baby. 
and I remember the the room our labor our labor room was just next to where my ward was. So for me, I never slept at night. I don't know. I I was looking forward to hear the baby cry the whole night. I was not convinced that the baby was not there. Actually, mm -hmm. I had not even cried uh, all through. And uh, when we had to leave now the hospital with the baby's clothes and uh, the basin empty-handed, now that when reality hit me mm -hmm. for sure that uh, we have lost the baby. I, I, I am have I have to go home. We have to go home without the baby, and really now that's when now my grieving began officially. Yeah, I cried, and uh, there was also la that last day that we had to go see our baby for the last time, and uh, him being a pastor, he like officiated that. Uh, I don't know. I don't call it a burial because burial is burial, but that uh, farewell ceremony, and he, he he he. I remember what he said that, baby. I know when God comes, we shall meet you that on that resurrection morning. Mm. And he said bye, and then he told me now, tell baby bye. And I remember breaking down that now we are leaving the baby. Really, that is when the reality hit me that, uh, ah, for sure, we are going home without a baby. Yeah. Let me just add that um, after leaving the hospital, mm -hmm. we still had another mountain. <laughs> we had other significant others, mm -hmm. the friends of this baby. Like the sister, every morning when he woke up, she, uh, she, I mean, she would come and just tap on the belly and maybe try and speak. And sometimes the boy could respond. You could see some very many, very rough kicks mm -hmm. saying, I acknowledge that my sister has said something. Yeah. And also we had another a friend of ours, we may call her domestic manager, mm -hmm. but she had come to just live with us. Mm -hmm. A certain lady, a very kind-hearted one. Mm -hmm. So we had to go now and break the news there. Mm -hmm. So they know we went to the hospital and they are expecting, they are prepared, they are putting a few things on the wall. And even like the, the sister there is very ready, where is our, our brother? Mm -hmm. Even the name, where is Nimra? Mm -hmm. And so we have arrived. Mm -hmm. They are there, what do you tell them? Where is baby? Everyone is asking where the baby is. Mm -hmm. And we get in, we, we shut the door. We were the only two of us. We get in, we shut the door. And they are still expecting maybe, as it has been customary, mm -hmm. some parents are out there holding the baby. They are allowing us to get in first. So you have to sit them down. Mm -hmm. And it was also very tough, eh? at least to break. We, we have done, we have at least given that death notification to other people out there. But now this is your daughter and, uh, and so the yeah. auntie there. You have now to tell her. Mm -hmm. And she may not even know what death is. So we begin like now bringing illustrations um, I remember we had gone for a burial of our grandpa, and she saw it. And then there was a time also, uh, our Vifaranga Wadogo, our Kinda Wandege, she has seen those that are dead. And uh, I remember a long time ago, I had taken time to show her, you Kinda Nikimambia, Kinda Huyu, in Toto Wandege, Hayupo. Ata ukimuinua mabawa, hawezi ya kapeperuka. Ukimipa chakula, hawezi ya mekufa. And so that is the illustration I used that same day. Mm -hmm. That you see when we went to the hospital, baby at Jakujana because he is dead. Mm -hmm. And do you remember what happened to that uh, uh, chick? Yes. To grandpa? Yes. Ah. So the baby went to Amekufa Mamzika. And he said, no, at Jamzika, but Amekufa, to Mwacha Hospital, at Azikwa. Mm -hmm. But Mungu atatupa Mungina. That was the last word I said to her. And she said, Sawa, to Tangoja. And I tell you, we never discussed that issue again with daughter. She had already picked that point. Sure. And I would say, as all that went, the Lord, the Lord actually, actually did, did exactly, exactly that. that. I have, let's, go, let's go back a bit. So you've come home. In retrospect, yes. do you think that you, you were probably depressed did you go did you meet the criteria for depression when you look back mm. how how was that initial let me say initial maybe five six months when you were home mm. immediately when you came from hospital maybe and, uh, begin, uh, what is depression at least him is a bit uh, he's done psychology a bit he would begin by first defining depression so that now we see even as we explained to the listener whether we, 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 what we were going through was depression. 
Mm, um, I forgot. I forgot. When, forgot. when I began now uh-huh. reading that other better book, eh? mm. I forgot the better book, the black book. Yeah, the black book. But I would say depression is those feelings of being so low mm-hmm. to a point that many things around you will change. Mm-hmm. You find yourself, your sleeping patterns have changed. Your eating habits have changed. You're not even eating anymore. Mm-hmm. Your skills and relation with other people. Mm-hmm. You're just feeling so low. There's nothing else. You are there regretting, blaming yourself or maybe other people. Mm-hmm. So that kind of uh, description, mm-hmm. it could be depression. So did you have that? And to answer that, I would say at some point I, I, I we were at that point. Mm-hmm. Because when we came home, uh, sleeping was no longer the same. I remember sometimes I would uh, try to sleep and then in the course of the night I I wake up uh, uh, feeling a uh, uh, baby's cry. You know, I think it was in my mind that, uh, you know, I was uh, supposed to be having a baby. So I would hear a baby cry in the course of the night and I would wake up, I'm looking for the baby, but the baby is not there. Mm-hmm. So sleeping patterns changed a bit. I would not uh, sleep through all the night without that uh, cautious part of looking for the baby. And then... Again, with um, with uh, my friends, when you're expecting, I don't know whether it was with me or with everybody else, it's like you see, every, mm-hmm. you, you always not take note of everyone else who is expecting. So I, I had my friends who even would share clinics with. So uh, anytime they would visit me with their babies and all that, I, I would realize that it would hit me that, oh, them, their babies are well, why, why mine? Why would it be... Why did her mind have to, to die? Mm. I kept on asking myself that question. But then through it all, something kept on reminding me that uh, really, through thick and thin, God is still there. Mm. Yeah, and, and he means the best for me. So even if I would ask that, I would have an answer still to myself. When you got home, you made the decision not to put baby's things away. Why? Uh, 